This example will include carriage inwards and carriage outwards. Now the word carriage is derived from the word carry which means to transport goods. Now carriage inwards and carriage outwards has to do with a carriage on purchases and both of these accounts will be an expense. This is not to be confused with returns inwards and returns outwards where one is an expense and the other one is an income. Now let's have a look at the following. We have our supplier, we have our business and then we have our customers. Now when goods are being transported from our supplier to the business that means that goods are coming into our business so this will be carriage inwards but when we move goods from our business to our customers that means the goods are going out of the business so in this case it will be carriage outwards so carriage inwards can be linked to purchases and carriage outwards can be linked to sales. Let's have a look at the transaction for carriage inwards. On the 9th, paid 560 cash for transportation of goods into our premises. The two accounts we can identify is cash and the second account will be carriage inwards. Why? Because the goods was transported into the premises. This will involve our cash book again. Why? Because the carriage inwards was paid with cash. So the amount will go under our cash column. So our cash will be decreasing and our carriage inwards will be increasing. Because previously we did not have a carriage inwards but now we do. Now let's classify the two accounts. We will have cash which is an asset and since our asset is decreasing we would enter that on the credit side and we would have carriage inwards which is an expense and our expense has increased so we would enter that on the debit side. Now let's go and complete that transaction. So first we need to open our carriage inwards account then we will credit our cash book with 560 and we would enter the amount in the cash column. The description in the details will be carriage inwards. And since we are entering this on the credit side of the cash book, that means we are paying out money. And then we would debit our carriage inwards account with 560 and the description in the details column would be cash. And this will complete our double entry process. Now let's have a look at a transaction that involves carriage outwards. On the 11th, paid by debit card for the transportation of goods sold, 240. Now the two accounts we can identify will be bank because it's paid with a debit card and carriage outwards because this is carriage on goods sold which means that we will deliver these goods to our customers. So again this will involve our cash book but in this case we would enter the amount in the bank column because we paid with a debit card. Our bank balance will decrease and our carriage outwards will increase because before this transaction we did not have an account for carriage outwards. Now the two accounts we have is bank and our bank decreased so we will enter that on the credit side and our carriage outwards increased so since it's an expense we would enter that on the debit side. Now let's go and record this transaction. Firstly we will need to open our carriage outwards account then we will credit our cash book with 240 the amount we will enter in the bank column because it was paid with a credit card and the description in the details column will be carriage outwards and since we are crediting the cash book this means that we are paying money out and then to complete our double entry we would debit our carriage outwards with 240 and the detail in the descriptions column will be bank because it was paid with a debit card and because in the cash book the amount is in the bank column 
and this will complete our double entry process.